Hey Rockin' Readers, welcome back for another installment. Today's book is number one in the Roscoe Riley Rules series. This is called Never Glue Your Friends to Chairs. And it is by Katherine Applegate with illustrations by Brian Biggs. And today we're going to be reading chapters one through seven. And then we will be back on Thursday with chapter eight through the end. So chapter one, welcome to Time Out. Hey, over here. It's uh, me, Roscoe. Welcome to the official Roscoe Riley Timeout Corner. Want to hang out with me? I have to warn you, though, we're going to be here for a while. See, I kind of got in trouble today again. Kids have to follow so many rules. Sometimes my brain forgets to remember them all. It's not like I try to find things to get in trouble for. It's just that trouble has a way of finding me. Truth is, I'm just a normal, everyday kid like you. My favorite food is blue M&Ms, my favorite sport is bed jumping, my favorite color is rainbow, and my most not favorite thing is lima beans. See, like I said, just normal, everyday kid. Normal, everyday kid who sometimes gets into trouble. Like today, I was just trying to help out my teacher. How was I supposed to know you shouldn't glue people to chairs with super mega gonzo glue? You've done that, haven't you? No? Never? Huh. Well, maybe you should hear my whole story. Chapter two, something you should know before we get started. Here's the thing about Super Mega Gonzo Glue. When the label says permanent, they mean permanent, as in forever and ever. Chapter three, something else you should know before we get started. You got to trust me on this. Super Mega Gonzo Glue is for gluing things, not people. It's a bad, bad idea to glue things to people for... That's just a for instance. Chapter four, this morning at my house. You're probably wondering how I know so much about super mega gonzo glue. Well, it all started this morning. I was helping my mom pack my lunch. Banana, I asked her, with no icky brown spots. Mom looked in my lunchbox. Check, she said. Little fishy crackers? Check. Gigantic chocolate cupcake with tons of gooey frosting and those little sprinkle things? Mom smiled or get it. I'm getting tired of this smile. Sorry, she said. We're fresh out of gigantic chocolate cupcakes. I sighed. It's worth a try. Mom grabbed a comb off the kitchen counter. Hair time, buddy. You want to look extra handsome for the open house? In the afternoon, all the parents were coming to visit our classroom. That's called an open house, even though it's at school. We're going to sing a song about bees and have desserts and juice and milk. I was especially excited about the dessert part. My mom was bringing her banana avocado raisin cream pie. I was not excited about that. My mom's a great cook, but my mom's a great mom, but she's not a great cook. You have to be extra nice to Ms. Diz, I said. Ms. Diz was my first grade teacher. She is brand new. She loves teaching my class, and even though we get a little crazy sometimes, Ms. D said we're high-spirited. Of course we'll be nice, Mom said, because this is her first time showing us off, and also because the principal will be there. I promise Dad and I will behave, said Mom. And be sure to clap after we do our B song, I said. I promise, said Mom. Why would we la And no laughing, I added. Why would we laugh, sweetheart? Because yesterday when we practiced, it was kind of a mess, I said. The head bobbles kept coming off. Mom frowned and asked, what's a head bobble? You know, the ten knees on a B head? I put my hands on my head and wiggled my pointer fingers to show her. Oh, Mom smiled. You mean the antenna? I'm lucky because I'm in the rhythm section. We pound with sticks to keep the beat and get bobbles, too. That's a very important job, Mom said. Don't worry. I'm sure everything will go perfectly today. Mom zipped up my lunchbox. Okay, kiddo, you're ready to go. Just then I remembered something. Wait, I cried. There's one more really important thing. I was supposed to bring art supplies yesterday for the art cupboard. Remember? You said we'd bring them because it's easier than being a room mother. Oh, I forgot, said Mom. Roscoe to the rescue. My family likes to say that when I help out. My dad came in and poured a cup of coffee. He was wearing a business suit, a brown sock, and a barefoot. Morning, he said. Roscoe, is your brother up yet? Yep, I said, but I had to use my Roscoe Riley sneak attack to wake him. Would you like to try it sometime? I'm listening, Dad said. He made one eyebrow go up. It's a trick a lot of dads can do. Well, first you knock real polite on Max's door. Then he growls and tells you to come back next year. And then, says Dad, then you jump up on his bed like it's a trampoline and you scream, Rise and shine, you bum! And if he's...
still, still doesn't wake up. You squirt him with juice, with your juice box on his nose and toes. I see, said dad, crude but effective. It was always nice when your dad was proud of you. Mom, I said, what about the art stuff? Mom was using the toaster for a mirror. I have bags under my eyes, she said. I tugged on her sleeve. Sometimes that helps mom focus. Mom, I said, we need goo sticks and scissors and paper. Glue sticks, said mom. The art supplies are in the junk drawer. Would you get them, Roscoe? I need to see if Max is ready for school. The junk drawer is one of my favorite off-limits places. It's like a pirate treasure chest, only with no rubies. I opened the door and I looked inside. Wow, I thought this drawer is full of cool stuff. And that's when all my trouble started. Chapter five, don't you dare glue. The junk drawer always has wonderful things in it. Keys, puzzle pieces, paper clips, the head from one of Hazel's dolls. I was playing brain surgeon the day that happened. The patient died. I pulled out the bag of art supplies. I added three purple rubber bands to the bag and a slinky that wouldn't slink anymore on the doll head. You never know when you might need an extra head. And then I saw something else in the drawer, a bottle of super mega gonzo glue. The grown-up glue mom calls don't you dare glue. Super mega gonzo glue is extra strong. Dad used it when I broke my great grandma's very old teacup. And when I broke mom's very precious flower vase. And when I broke grandma's very, grandpa's very ugly glass potato souvenir from Idaho. Adults should really should keep breakable stuff away from kids, you know. Mom glanced into the family room. Max, did you find your other shoe? The bus will be here in five minutes. My big brother came to the kitchen. He was armed with a juice box. My shoe is on the roof, Max said. And then he squirted me with a straw. At least it was apple juice. That's my favorite. Max, Mom cried. He started this war, Max said. My hair's all wet, I complained. Maybe you should cut off your head, said Max, which was not all that helpful, really. Shut up, I said to Max. Roscoe, Dad said. Shut up, please, I said. D wait, just a minute, Max, Mom said. Did you say your shoe was on the roof? There's a good explanation, Max said. I'm sure there is, said Dad. His eyebrow went up again. That eyebrow gets a lot of exercise. Max and Roscoe were playing astronaut, Max said. Max's shoe was a space shuttle, I added. I need a ladder, Mom said. I need more coffee, said Dad. I need a new brother, I said. You need a new brain, said Max. Guy, said Dad. Peace. Roscoe, Max and your dad and I have work to do on the roof, Mom said. Keep an eye on Hazel for me, sweetie. Hazel's my little sister. She was busy watching cartoons in the family room. Mom says educational cartoons are okay, especially until she's had her first cup of coffee. I'll hold the ladder, Dad said to Mom, if you climb. Dad's afraid of heights, but don't tell anybody it's a family secret. Also, please don't tell him that he's losing his hair. Dads can be very sensitive, you know. Dad, I said, before you go outside, I think you should know you only have one sock on. Dad looked down at his foot. Has anyone seen my other sock? Try on the roof, said Mom. Try Goofy's stomach, I said. I think he ate it. Goofy is our big white dog. Dad groaned. Then he went outside with his one bare foot, followed by Max and Mom. I checked on Hazel. She was talking to a blue dog on the TV screen. Goofy was eating cereal. I went back to the junk drawer and I picked up the don't you dare glue. I imagined Mom saying, Roscoe, don't you dare touch that don't you dare glue. I put the glue down and imagine my teacher saying, Roscoe, what a wonderful helper you are. Thank you so much for the grown-up glue. Hazel came into the kitchen. She was wearing a paper crown. Hazel's favorite games are princess dress up, mud pie picnic, and let's dress up Roscoe like a princess and make him eat mud pies. H-I-J-K-L-N-M-O-P-E-D. Hazel sang. She paused. Who is Ellen Elmo? She asked. They'll explain it all in kindergarten, I said. I picked up the glue again. Hazel's eyes got big. That's it, don't you dare glue. It's for my teacher, I said. Things are always breaking at school. Like yesterday when I broke the pencil sharpener. Sometimes I get a little bit carried away when I'm sharpening pencils. I put the glue in the bag of art supplies and then I grabbed the hero back, my hero guy backpack. Hero guy doesn't have his own TV show or anything. Mom got him on sale at the mall. Hey, Roscoe, Max called. Hurry up. The bus is coming and you got to come see something. I took Hazel's hand and looked at the junk drawer one last time. Maybe I should put the glue back, I thought. After all, when you call something don't you dare glue, there's probably a good reason. I could hear the bus driver honking. Oh, well, I thought. It was just a harmless little bitty bottle of glue. 
When Hazel and I got outside, I saw a big silver ladder leaning against the house. Dad was holding it. Check it out, Max exclaimed. Mom's on the roof again. Excellent, I said. That's always a good way to start your day. I yelled goodbye as I ran for the bus stop. See you at the open house, Dad said. Just then there was a big gust of wind and the ladder fell with a crash. Probably Mom would have yelled goodbye too, but she was too busy hanging from the roof. Chapter 6, The Secret Handshake. When I got to my classroom, my friends Gus and Emma ran over to say hello. The first thing we did was our secret handshake. Here's how it goes in case you'd like to try. You scream each other's names. You wait for the teacher to say inside voices, please. You do a high five. You do a low five. You stick out your tongue. You get all serious and you say, how do you do, Mr. Riley? Of course, you would not say Riley, probably. It would be pretty amazing if we had the same last name. Emma pointed to my elbows. Cool sparkle band-aids, Roscoe. I mostly always have a band-aid on me somewhere or a cast or a sling. Mom says to think of it all as a fashion statement. When I was four, I even had an eye patch. The eye patch was black. It was totally pirate. How'd you get the band-aids, Gus asked. Racing my Hot Wheels car down the stairs, I said. The Hot Wheels won. Household accidents are the most common cause of injuries in children, said Emma. Emma teaches me lots of interesting facts. She was born in China, and her parents adopted her when she was a baby. I wish I was born in China instead of just Kalamazoo. Gus teaches me lots of useful things, too. Just last week, he showed me how to make armpit farts. <laughs> What's in the bag, Roscoe? Emma asked. Art stuff from Ms. Diz, I said. I opened the bag. Gus and Emma peeked inside. Cool head, Gus said. Her name was Drusilla, I said. Before I brain surgeried her. <laughs> Super mega gonzo glue, Gus said. Whoa, my mom won't let me near that stuff. Me either, said Emma. Me either, I said, but I figured Ms. Diz could use it for when we break stuff. Let's go show her what I brought. Ms. Diz was busy stapling butterfly pictures to the bulletin board. Ms. Diz isn't really her name, but her real name is hard to say. It uses maybe like half the alphabet, so she cut off the end for my class. Maybe when I'm grown up, I'll be called Mr. Rye, for short, or not. I handed Ms. Diz the bag of art supplies. This is for you, I said. It's for the art cover. There's special glue in there, and I even included a free head. Ms. Diz frowned. What kind of head, Roscoe? Just a doll head. I smiled so she wouldn't worry. Since Ms. Diz knew, is new, she gets mixed up sometimes. I try to help her out whenever I can. After all, I was a kindergartner last year, so I already know everything there is to know about school. For example, when Ms. Diz forgot the janitor's name, I remembered it was Mr. McGeely. McGeely. She had to call him when Gus threw up his ravioli after lunch. Sometimes Ms. Diz looks pretty pooped by the end of the day. I hope she doesn't decide to go and do another line of work. My kindergarten teacher did that. It wasn't my fault, probably. Although I think maybe she got a little frustrated when I painted the class hamsters green. But it was St. Patrick's Day. Hamsters like to look perky for the holidays. Ms. Diz checked her watch. Class, she said in a loud voice. Then she put a finger on his lips. This means shh. I know you're all excited about the open house today, said Ms. Diz. We're going to have a dress rehearsal first thing this morning. Dress rehearsal is when you practice with costumes and stuff. It doesn't mean you have to wear a dress. Let's just hope things go a little better than they did yesterday, Ms. Diz said with a laugh. I'm sure today we'll all be on our best behavior. Poor old brand new Ms. Diz. I think maybe she forgot about our high spirits. Chapter 7, Mess Rehearsal. First, I want all you bees to put on your antenna, said Ms. Diz. Real bees use their head bottles to smell and feel things. But ours were just made of pipe cleaners and styrofoam balls with glitter on them. They were attached to a plastic headband thingy, shaped like a great big upside down U. Last year, the third graders used the baubles for a play about butterflies. So the headbands were a little stretched out by their gigantic third grade heads. When we were ready, Ms. Diz went to the music cupboard. She handed each drummer two red topping sticks. We use the sticks for music time. They're our instruments. Or really, I would rather have a drum set or a tuba. I only know how much fun the sticks are, children, said Ms. Diz. But as you may recall, some of you got a little carried away yesterday. I think maybe she was looking at me. But I wasn't the only one who got in stick trouble. Gus was the one who started the pretend sword fight. I was not guilty, mostly. Our rhythm section sits in the chair, said Ms. Diz, nice and still. That was me and Gus and Dewan and Maria and Coco. All the other bees in the back row, said Ms. Diz, stand up nice and tall. We caught into our places, bees and bee drummers, baubles and sticks, and we were ready for action. Okay, let's sing nice and clear, said Ms. Diz, and no poking with the sticks. How about swords, Dewan asked. No swords, said Ms. Diz. How about death rays, said Gus. 
No death rays, said Ms. Diz. When I count to three, start singing. Here's how our bee song goes. Fuzzy bees, fuzzy bees, look at us fly. Bees are the best bugs, you want to know why. We make our own honey and soar in the sky. Can you do what we do? We dare you to try. Great job, said Ms. Diz when we were done. Roscoe, you sound especially wonderful, but we need to hear the other kids too. He's blowing out my eardrums, Ms. Diz, Coco complained. My head bobbles keep falling off, said Wyatt. Ms. Diz took a deep breath. I know the antenna don't fit very well, children. Just do the best you can. Let's try the song one more time. This time, let me hear those sticks pounding out the rhythm. We sang it again. I wasn't so loud this time, but if you ask me, they're missing out. Better, said Ms. Diz when we were done. My bobbles keep falling in my eyes, Hassan said. Oh dear, said Ms. Diz. Maybe we should just forget about the antenna. But we have to have bobbles, Coco cried. Otherwise, how will our parents know we're bees? You make a good point, Coco. Hassan, bring me your antenna, said Ms. Diz. Maybe I can tighten them up a bit. While Ms. Diz worked on Hassan's bubbles, bobbles, Maria started tapping her sticks. Dwan tapped along. Gus tapped too. On my head. Children, said Ms. Diz. She was still trying to fix Hassan's baubles. No tapping, please. We waited and waited until while we sat there, I came up with a new invention. I put the rhythm sticks in my mouth. I made them point straight down. Ta-da, walrus teeth. Eh. I think when I grow up, I may be a famous inventor or else an ice cream truck driver. Dewan and Gus laughed at my walrus teeth. Maria put her sticks on her head. She looked just like an alien. Even more people laughed. Gus put his sticks up his nose and he just looked gross. Pretty soon, we were all tapping and laughing and being walruses and aliens, except Gus. He just kept the sticks in his nose. Children, said Ms. Diz loudly, but we couldn't hear her very well with all that tapping and laughing. Gus held up one of his nose sticks. I challenge you to a duel, he cried. I jumped up on my chair and so did Gus. You can't sword fight sitting down. We sort of forgot about the no sword fighting rule. Uh-oh. Roscoe! Ms. Diz held up her hand and put a finger to her lips. Quiet down now. We got very quiet. Gus and I froze in our chairs. Ms. Diz pointed to the doorway. Mr. Goose Garden was standing there and he is our principal. That's the big boss of the school. He's mostly nice unless you've been making bad choices. Then you have to sit in his office and think about your behavior. And when that happens, Mr. Goose Garden wears his I mean business face. And right now, Mr. Goose Garden had on his I really mean business face. And that is the end of chapter seven and the end of part one. And we will be back on Thursday to pick up where we left off. I hope that they don't have to go to the principal's office, but it is looking like they probably will. See you later, guys. Bye.